At the end of the 19th century, Vittorio Cuniberti was having a very similar set of thoughts to Jackie Fisher, who at the time was ironically enough not too far away in Malta leading the British Mediterranean fleet. Maybe it's something in the Mediterranean air. These thoughts centred on a ship with a uniform main battery. In Cuniberti's case, he would take his all 8-inch armoured cruiser and then develop it into what he would eventually term an ideal battleship for the British Navy, armed with all 12-inch guns. Fisher's thoughts would go from a similar 7.5-inch armed cruiser to a 10-inch armed battleship, then merge with Cuniberti's and produce HMS Dreadnought in the end of things. But partway through that process, Cuniberti did actually try to get some of his ideas built, but the Regia Marina turned down what was essentially SMS Blucher over half a decade earlier and just a fraction slower, and for technical reasons they were also not in favour of his battleship idea. Not to be deterred, Cuniberti found that the Regia Marina was interested in a new pre-dreadnought, with a specification that it needed to be faster than any battleship and stronger than any armoured cruiser. At the time of this requirement, 1900, that would mean that the London or Duncan classes were the classes in question for the British, and the Suffren and Aena were the classes in question for the French. This, in turn, meant that the speed of the new ship would have to be usefully faster than 19 knots, and the armament would need to be at least two very heavy guns and numerous lighter weapons in order to deal with armoured cruisers. Gudiberti rapidly got to work merging his other two ideas, and in 1901 the first two ships of his proposed new design went into production. These would become the Regina Elena class, with the lead ship, along with the Vittorio Emanuel, being laid down in that year, 1901, with the Roma and Napoli following in 1903, with the class averaging about three years from keel to launch and another two and a half to three years to commissioning, although that latter time period did vary considerably depending on the ship. For a target displacement of 13,000 tonnes, they actually displaced around 12,600 tonnes at normal displacement, and albeit 14,000 tonnes fully loaded. Uh, power came from over two dozen coal-fired boilers, which produced between 19 and 22,000 indicated horsepower, depending on the ship and the circumstances, and this drove two screws via a pair of vertical triple expansion engines for a top speed of just over 22 knots for the fastest ship of the class. This actually made them a knot faster than HMS Dreadnought, which had started construction about four years after the Regina Elena, but entered service a year before it. But as with all period vertical triple expansion driven ships, they could only maintain this speed in relatively short bursts. Firepower consisted of a main battery of just two single 12 inch guns, with one turret forward and one aft this of course being half the armament of a standard pre-dreadnought's main battery. But the secondary battery was no less than a dozen 8-inch guns in six twin turrets, three per side, with the second turret on each side mounted higher, which allowed them to give a six-gun broadside with the 8-inch guns, but an eight-gun fore or aft salvo with these weapons. A minimum of 16 single 3-inch guns for anti-torpedo boat work were placed on the ships, with the latter pair of ships carrying more of these weapons. Two submerged torpedo tubes, one per side, finished the total loadout. Protection was made up of a belt that was just under 10 inches thick at the strongest point, along with a 1.5-inch thick deck, with 8 inches on the main turrets and 6 inches on the secondaries. This actually made the ships relatively well protected, as the armour covered almost as much as contemporary British ships, whilst being slightly thicker on the belt. And whilst this was a little bit thinner than the maximum thickness of belt on the French vessels, the narrowness of the band of main armour on those French ships left a lot of those ships effectively unprotected or less well protected across the vast majority of their hull area. For all their superlative qualities, the Regina Elenas were so slow in building that by the time they entered service, almost all the major navies had built one or maybe even two generations of pre-dreadnoughts that succeeded them, and were either building or had built their first and sometimes even second classes of dreadnought. Regardless of this, 
the Italian ships saw their first actions in the Italo-Turkish War of 1911. The Ottoman fleet, such as it was at the time, didn't dare to come out to face them, and so the ships were left to escort Italian troops around the Mediterranean as they hoovered up various Ottoman possessions. World War I was likewise disappointingly quiet. Although the Regia Marina felt it could afford to risk the Regina Elenas a little bit more than the precious dreadnoughts, they still did not manage to confront any major Austro-Hungarian vessels before the war ended. With only five dreadnoughts left in service by the time of the Washington Naval Treaty, thanks to Leonardo da Vinci deciding to explode in harbour in 1916, the four pre-dreadnoughts were permitted to be retained by that treaty, with an early replacement clause built in, but various economic issues in Italy during the 1920s meant that all four ships would be sold for scrap in the middle of the decade, without any immediate replacements being ordered. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.